Hello, this is Learning with Mark Warren and welcome back to another Lightroom Zero to Hero training series video. In our previous video, we talked about alternative import options. So basically, these are just other ways of bringing images into your Lightroom catalog. And we did that by synchronizing folders, by tether capture, and also auto import. In this video, we're gonna talk about the most important thing you need to understand about Lightroom, and that's backing up your catalog and backing up your images. So I'm gonna show you a variety of different backup options for Lightroom, and hopefully this will prevent you from ever having to lose images if you ever get a corrupt catalog or a crashed hard drive or something like that. So let's pull up Lightroom and show you what all the backup options are all about. All right, so let's talk about Lightroom's backup catalog settings. First off, I wanna go up to Edit, and I'm gonna to go to Catalog Settings, and this will bring up our general catalog settings. So it tells me the location of our Lightroom catalog, and also gives us the option about backing up. So by default, it's usually set to never, but you can set it for once a month, once a week, once a day, every time Lightroom exits or when Lightroom next exits. For now, I'm gonna leave this on every time Lightroom exits, but typically I only back up my catalog maybe once a week uh, or once every couple of weeks. So let's show you how the backup dialog box works. So I'm gonna close out a Lightroom here. It's gonna pop up this box. So here's the key key paragraph that nobody ever reads it seems so settings for the catalog lightroom training catalog indicate that it should be backed up each time it is closed note this only backs up the catalog file not the photos referenced by it that to me should be in bold highlighted blinking text and a lot of people miss this little statement so we'll talk more about that in a second but by default, it's going to back up to a drive typically on your hard drive on your computer, your default hard drive. But if you're truly going to back up your catalog, put it on an external drive or some other source, not your main computer. So I'm going to go to choose and put this on my F drive, my backup F drive. So I'm going to come down here to videos, hit F. I'm going to create a new folder called LR Training Backup Catalogs. And we're gonna select that folder and we're ready to go. So it's gonna back up now to my F drive, which is a backup or external hard drive. And also it will give us the option to test the integrity before backing up. So it's gonna test the catalog to make sure everything's good. And also optimize the catalog after, it's backs, after it backs up. So if your catalog ever starts running slow, this will actually help speed up your catalog by optimizing it, making sure it gets rid of all the garbage and you know fixes anything that might be a problem. So we're gonna leave those two options checked and click back up and it's gonna take just a few seconds to do this. Like I said, we don't have but 75 images here, so not a whole lot of images, and it's really quick, and it's done. So now when I go to my F drive, I'm gonna to go to that Lightroom Training Backup Catalogs, there's the backup file. Now note, this is a small file, about 11 uh, megabytes. It only contains the Lightroom catalog file. There are no images here, so all my images that were in that catalog they're not here. This only has the thumbnail references and all the notes about the changes that we made to our images. This is what trips a lot of people up. I had a good friend of mine, basically, she uh, had some computer issues and her computer ended up crashing, so she had to end up recovering everything. Now, she backed up her Lightroom catalogs, which was great. However, when she pulled up her catalogs and she's trying to work on her images, she's like, none of my images are working. I was like, well, what do you mean none of them are working on them? working. So she goes, well, when I try to develop them, it's not finding them. They're missing. And I was like, are there question marks all over the images? She goes, yeah. She goes, but I backed up the catalog. I was like, okay, when you backed up your catalog, did you back up your images with the catalog? She's like, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. And I'm like, yeah, you were kind of supposed to do that. So long story short, she ended up losing like thousands and thousands of images of clients, some of her kids, I mean, just gone. So she ended up having to send that drive in for recovery. They were able to actually recover a lot of it, but not all of it. So long story short, moral of the story is, 
the backup catalog option in Lightroom can get you into trouble, especially if you don't back up your actual images themselves. Now, there's the option for backing up the catalog, but now you've got to make this extra step and back up all your images. And to me, that's too many steps. That's too much work. So I'm going to show you how I back up my catalog or back up my images. So I'm going to pull up Lightroom here again. I've got my folders here. Okay, so here's how I back up my catalog. Instead of going to the option up here to back up the actual catalog itself and then having to back up my images, I like to do it all in one step and like I said, have the catalog and my images backed up all at one time. So what I will do is first, I'm going to the training photography folder, which is my master folder where all my images are located underneath here. So it's the same folder that's sitting here on the desktop. This is the folder that I would normally want to back up if I'm doing any backups. So I'm going to pull Lightroom back up here. And what I'm going to do is turn off all my filtering. So I'm going to just select library filter to none. And I've got 75 images total here. So I'm going to right click on this, go to export this folder as a catalog. And now it's going to pull up some options for me. I'm going to save this on my F drive because again, I don't want to save it on the same computer drive I'm working on. I want to put it at a different location and I'm going to put it in this Lightroom training backup catalogs and we're going to name the file. We'll call this training photography backup. So it says save as file type, support it files, just leave that as default. And here's what it's telling you it's going to do. It's going to export a catalog, so a copy or a new copy of the catalog with 64 photos, 11 virtual copies. That's our 75 total. And it's going to also export the negative files if this box is checked, which means it's going to export all my images and also include any available previews. So when these images render these thumbnails or the one-to-one -one previews, then basically I can include that as part of the catalog. Now I'm going to click Save. Now this isn't a very big catalog, so it's going to go pretty quick. It's only got the 75 images. So as you can see, the bar is working across here at the top and it's exporting or copying these images out to that new backup catalog. So it shouldn't take but a second. I'm going to pull up that catalog here. So I'm going to go back to the Lightroom training backup. There's our training photography backup. And there it is, new catalog. There it's got another copy of a desktop folder, training photography, and there's all our images underneath. And like I said, Lightroom's done now. So if I close out of this catalog, skip this, and then go to the F drive where I made it or created that new backup catalog, I can actually open this up as its own individual catalog now. And I can work this directly off of my external drive. So I click on that. And there you go. There's all the backup images, all 75. One in a quick collection is showing the folders are now off of the F drive and there they are. So that's how I typically go about backing up my catalog. Now, I, I'm going to switch back to the original catalog here. We'll relaunch this. So this is my original hard catalog that's on my C drive. Now, I don't typically back up the whole entire catalog. What I do, since I work off a master catalog and I work shoots, I will work a shoot. Once I'm done with it, I'm going to back it up as its own individual shoot. And here's how that goes. Let's say, for instance, I'm finished with the shoot of portraits. Everything's all good to go. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to export this folder as its own catalog. And just like the way I set up my folder structure for, you know, my regular catalog, I do the same for backup. So let's say this was shot in 2013. I'm going to create a folder called 2013, enter, and then open that up. And now I'm going to type in the name portraits. Now you don't have to create a folder for portraits. It'll automatically create that for you. So I'm going to create the file name portraits. Now it's going to create a new catalog name portraits 13 photos 11 virtual copies i want to export all the negative files and include available previews as well so now i'm going to hit save and it's going to do its thing so it's only going to take a 
few seconds to do that since we don't have a whole lot of files here. And if I go into that training photography folder off my F drive, go to 2013 portraits, there they are. Now I can open this one up as its own individual catalog. So I'm going to skip that. Let's open this up. Now I can work this set of images directly off of this hard drive. And like I said, it's backed up the images, all of our changes, all of our metadata stuff, all of that's here. Now, let's do something different. Let's say I wanted to take one of these images back into our catalog, our original main catalog. And let's say I made some changes to, you know, one of the images. Let's take this one for example. This was the last image that we bought into the catalog. Let's say I want to take this and make it into a black and white and then update our original catalog. So I'm going to just do a quick conversion here, V for black and white. We'll drop down the exposure and boost up the contrast. That's all we're going to do on this image. And looks good. So now I'm going to go back to the library, the grid mode, and I'm going to just close or actually restart, go back to my original Lightroom training catalog. So this is a little confusing. I know I'm bouncing back and forth between catalogs. So I know I changed this one to a black and white. And let's say I wanted to update this image from that previous catalog. There's an option to re-import images back into a catalog from another catalog. So if I hold down my Alt key on the PC, if I'm on a Mac, it's going to be the Option key. It gives me the option to import from a catalog. So I'm going to click on Import Catalog and then let go of that Alt button. Now I'm going to click on 2013 Portraits go to portraits one more time and it's going to bring up this new dialog box. So it says all folders, there's 24 images, all folders and it's showing the desktop training photography portraits. So now it's showing me images that I can potentially bring back in. Now these are all grayed out so they're saying these images are already in our catalog existing right now. These other ones here are showing these other images have metadata changes or they have setting changes. So looking at these, I changed this image here in particular. Now it may be picking up metadata changes from when it just re-rendered the images in Lightroom uh, for the new catalog. So I actually don't want to bring these other three in. I only want to bring in the one that I made changes to. So I'm going to uncheck these three images. Where's the other one? There it is. So I know there's some metadata changes there, but I don't care about that. I want to change, I want the changes for the one that's in black and white. So that one I want to re-import into our existing catalog. So no new photos are there. Changed existing photos. So it found four. So this was metadata changes. And of course this one we changed to black and white. So we want to replace the metadata, the developed settings, and the original negative file with these new settings. Now you can preserve your old settings as a virtual copy. So what it would do is actually create a new virtual copy for the old images that's already in this catalog. So the one that's in color here, it would make a virtual copy for that. But I'm not going to worry about that now. I'm just going to uncheck that and just overwrite the uh, ones that's already there. So it's showing me the preview of what it's going to bring in. I only checked this one to bring in since this is the one that I know I made changes to. These others, I'm not going to worry about the, the metadata changes or the updates that it wants to do. And I'm just going to click import. Now, before I do that, because I'm using the same path on the C drive as desktop training photography portraits, I don't have to re-change the actual path or whatever. Everything lines up the same. So I try to keep everything consistent as far as, as far as the folder naming structure when I'm on my external drives as well. So I'm just going to click import and there it did, goes. It bought in the one file. I don't have any more or less images than what it originally started with. I'm just going to go to the portraits folder. There's our image that we converted to black and white. So I took it out of the catalog. I updated it in another catalog and then I re-imported it in and all that was from a backup. <laughs> so this also is kind of helpful if you work with multiple people in multiple catalogs, you can update catalogs back and forth. A little confusing stuff, but just showing you, just want to show you that real quick. 
So this is typically how I back up my catalogs. I back up by the shoot and not the entire catalog itself. So I might have a whole folder full of images on an external drive, 2012, let's say the Smith shoot, and then I've got, you know, the Johnson shoot, and then, you know, the, the Thomas shoot. All of those are gonna be their own individual catalogs that I can rework off that external drive and not have to worry about it. Now I'll make a backup copy of the external drive also as well, just to make sure I've got my butt covered and have my images in multiple places. So that's my backup method. Now you can backup images on an external hard drive. It can be on a CD-ROM. Personally, I don't use CD-ROMs much anymore. Most of the time, I will use a hard drive, um, or it could be a memory stick. It could be anywhere that it can be another drive location. Um, you can even back up stuff uh, on a network drive or whatever. Now, you can't run the catalog from a network drive, but you can certainly back up images to another location. If you want to use a RAID controller, you can certainly immediately back up using RAID controllers. There's all kinds of different ways that you can back up your catalogs, but this is just my way of doing it. I just use external USB drives for right now. So, like I said, this is very important to get a good backup strategy when it comes to your catalog. Again, I do not use the option for the catalog settings in this backup for maintaining my catalogs. I usually do the export catalog option for shoot. For me, that works a whole lot better than having multiple steps of backing up my catalog individually and my, individu my images individually. I do it all with one swoop that way. So I hope this was very helpful. Again, I know you got images in Lightroom. At some point you need to back them up. So I certainly recommend backing up your catalog as soon as possible, backing up your images as soon as possible so they're in a safe place. If you have questions, drop them down below, down in the comments. You can also put questions on our Google Plus community page. Again, uh, it's, uh, we've got a great community that's building over there and we hope to do some hangouts really soon. I'll probably be announcing one for maybe sometime next week. So check that out. Keep um, posted here on YouTube. Check out our Learning with Mark Warren, uh, Mark Warren page on Google+. And like I said, I'll be announcing when I'll be doing the hangouts over there. This is Mark Warren. Stay tuned. We'll have more Lightroom Zero to Hero videos coming at you soon. We're pretty much through the really meat and potato part of Lightroom, which is mainly the library and develop module. We'll touch base on some of the map, book, slideshow, print, web stuff a little later on. But pretty much for what I've given you with the series here, this should be enough for you to get started in using Lightroom to become very proficient in it. Now with anything, it's just going to take practice. You've got to practice using the program before you really get the ins and outs of it. You can watch videos all day, but unless you practice it, then you'll never really pick it up and lock it into your memory yourself. So again, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. We'll have more videos coming at you soon.